everyone, it's Catherine here again. Thanks so much for tuning in to Jubilee Kids. It's fantastic to have you here. And look who we've got today. This is Skippy, straight from Jubilee Kids News, who's coming to hang out with us this morning. You're very welcome, Skippy. Well, it's another week and another Spot the Difference challenge, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled to what might change in this scene. And a very well done to all the people who got last week's correct. That's right, my shirt changed. All these people noticed those changes. We had the Chitsikis, the Petersons, the Vaughans, the Barters, the Krugers, the Bergs, and the Pillays. Well done, guys, good job. Make sure you keep your eyes peeled today as well. We also had some fantastic responses to our family challenge. And there's two gonna come up now. These are from the Barters and the Chitsikis. So have a good look and see if you can see how they've done them. Thanks so much for sending those in, we really appreciate it. So for this week's Feature the Leader section, we have a whole team for you, and they're going to tell you what they've been up to during lockdown. Right, hi everyone, and welcome to Jubilee Kids. Uh, we've got some of our leaders from our group here together. I'm Angela, and during lockdown, which has been going on a while now, I've been practicing some art. So I brought two things to show you. This is my art journal. Cool. And I've been doing some art. And then on a really bad day, I did a bigger piece of mixed media art. That was this one. So wow. I've been doing some of my art. <laughs> Zach. Hi. Um, so my name is Zach. Um, and since lockdown started, I have been doing some poetry and some acting. So unfortunately, I'm going to show you guys that now, but um, that's what's been keeping me busy. Yeah, um, I am sorry in this lockdown. I've been taking care of a little bit in my new pet. My name is Jasmine. Oh, Jasmine! <laughs> 11 weeks. Oh, oh you lucky. Sweet. Hi, everyone. I am Ross, and this is Caleb, and this is Anna. And during lockdown, we've been doing all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, Caleb has made Sting. Those of you who know the Lord of the Rings will know it. This is the Hobbit sword. And Anna has made a very cool butterfly. Uh, there it is. And on it, it says, we love you. Uh, and so that's part of what we've been up to during lockdown. Hi, guys. Um, it's Julieta. And during lockdown, I have been doing um, some art. And I'll show you this. So it's a little wave that I drew. Yeah. And I've been doing some skateboarding and trying to teach myself how to skateboard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, you have all been busy. If any of you watching have been doing anything exciting during lockdown, please do let us know. We'd love to hear from you. So, as always, I'm going to give you one clue to see if you can remember what we learned about last week. So this is this week's clue. Oh, that light's really blinding in my eyes. Oh, no, I can't see anything at all. Now, can you remember what last week's lesson was about? Why don't you chat to your mums and dads and see what you can remember. So hopefully you remembered that when that light shone down from heaven and Jesus spoke to Saul, he completely changed his life forever. It was a really exciting story. Now we're going to do some worship. So why don't you get up, do some stretching, get your mums and dads off the couches and come and sing and dance with us. wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through 
You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. enjoyed those songs that was lots of fun now we're going to go over to lee and ruth fredericks who are going to help us to remember the memory verse that we started last week and after that we're going to go over to our intro with Ange and her team hi everybody we're back again with our memory verse i wonder how many of you have been singing it this week here it is again to remind you have fun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 2 Corinthians 5.17 2 Corinthians 5.17 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. The old has passed away, the new has come. So we're going to be looking at a story later on, but in the story there is somebody who belongs to one group and keeps thinking about another group. So we're going to form some groups today by asking who is yes and who is in a no group. So we're going to ask some questions and you guys can answer with a yes. Can everyone practice? Good. And with a no. Great. So if you're watching this at home, you can do this exactly the same thing and just answer in the same way. With a big yes, put your thumb up with your family. Great. And put a no, thumbs down with your family. Okay. So here we go. Here's some questions. Number one is super easy. Do you wear glasses? Oh my goodness. There's only two of us who wear glasses, the ancients. <laughs> Great. Next question. Did you want to be a superhero? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Brilliant. 
Do you like cabbage? Uh, I don't like cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Have you flown in a helicopter? Zara, have you flown in a helicopter? Oh, no. So, some people have. That would be an interesting thing to find out. Have you done ballet? Daddy! <laughs> Good. Do you have a beard? Yeah. Half, half a beard. Okay, did you laugh today? Yes. Oh, only Caleb and Mikey didn't laugh today. <laughs> right. You laughed today. Did you ever eat a snake? No! <laughs> oh, Zach! <laughs> did you? Yeah. <laughs> did you eat really, Zach? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. There's I have one person in the yes group. Unbelievable. What does it taste like? Um so it depends on how you prepared it. Um but the way we did it was um we put it over the fire. So it just tasted kind of burnt, but otherwise it just tastes <laughs> like chicken or like any other meat. Oh, I'm just wow. fine. <laughs> Brilliant guys, thank you so much. Now in that game there were some people in the yes group and some people in the no group, weren't there? Now, before Jesus came, the Jews were in God's yes group. They were his chosen people. But even they had to follow lots of yes and no rules to be clean enough for God. But when Jesus came, he changed that. He showed that he was bigger than the rules. And he made a way for all of us to be in his yes group. So let's go and hear about that and the story of Cornelius with Ange. <music> Long ago, when God created the world, he wanted to have a relationship with all people. But the first man, Adam, sinned. And God, since then, has been making a plan to come back, to get his children to come back close to him. First, it was through one man, Abraham and Abraham's family. And then it was through a great nation called the Jewish nation, who were God's promised people. Now I'm going to tell us a story today from Acts 10 about one of these people who was a Jew and his name was Peter. Now God had given all the Jewish people laws and they had to listen to those laws. There were yeses of things they should do like celebrations and noes, things they shouldn't eat, people they shouldn't be close to so that they could stay holy and set apart for God. Now there was a man who wasn't a Jew, and his name was Cornelius. Cornelius lived in Caesarea, and Peter was staying at the home of Simon the, Peter, Simon the Tanner in Joppa. Now, these two, God, they didn't know each other, but God wanted them to know each other. So let's start with Cornelius. Cornelius was not in the family of God, but he knew God and he prayed and he gave to the poor. And one day, while he was praying, an angel came to him and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayers and seen that you give to the poor. And he has a message for you. Go, send your servants to Joppa and send for a man called Peter. He is staying in the house of Simon the Tanner. Go and call him. And the angel disappeared. Cornelius called two of his servants and one of his soldiers and said go I have seen an angel from the Lord and he has said you must go and get Peter who is staying in Simon the Tanner's house in Joppa the men set out it was a long journey 42 kilometers 
They must have worked all night. And whilst they were travelling, Peter, whom the angel had said to Cornelius, they must go and find, he was praying on the roof of his house. And as he was praying, he fell into a trance. And he had a dream that opened his heart to a new way of thinking. The vision that he saw was of a sheet coming down from heaven and being laid in front of him. And on it were all kinds of animals, four hoofed animals, reptiles, and even birds of the air. And a voice said to him, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, said Peter, for these are unclean. You have said no. And the voice of the Lord said to him, Peter, do not call unclean what I have made pure. And again, the sheet came down and the same thing, the voice said, Peter, kill and eat. Again, Peter said, I cannot, Lord, you have said no. And a third time, the same sheet came down and was laid before Peter. And the voice of the Lord said, kill and eat. Now, Peter wondered about this dream. His whole life, he had been set apart. He had done what God had asked him to do. He had lived by the rules of what he could and couldn't eat so that they were different to the other people. God didn't want them to mix with those people and lose the ways of God. So he had kept them holy and apart. Peter couldn't understand why this vision was saying, go and eat. But he knew something in his heart was opened. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit came to him and said, Peter, Three men are on their way to talk to you. Do not hesitate to go with them. And as Peter walked down, three men arrived and called, Peter. And Peter said, Here I am. I am the one you are looking for. And they said, Our master Cornelius in Caesarea is a God-fearing man. An angel came to him and said, We must come and call you, so please come with us. Peter invited these men, who were not part of God's family, to come into his house. And he spoke to them. Peter's heart was already changing. And the next day, they set out back to Caesarea. to go to Cornelius's house. Now while they were on their way, Cornelius called all his family and friends together to come and hear why the angel had called Peter to come to them. And as they arrived, Cornelius came out and he fell to his knees because he respected this man of God so much. And Peter said to him, Arise, you are a man just the same as me. Peter's heart was changed. He was starting to see Cornelius as a man just like him who he could eat with and be with. And they all went into Cornelius' house. Now Peter said, Cornelius, you know I am a Jew and I am not meant to come in to the house of a Gentile. You were part of the people that God had said we shouldn't go near. But God has made it clear to me in a vision that I should not call unclean what he has made clean. Cornelius said, Peter, 
an angel from the Lord came to me and told me to send for you. And now you are here. Tell us. Tell us what you need to. And from the beginning, Peter described all that Christ had done. That Jesus Christ had come and died on a cross so that all people might be saved. Jesus had said to them, Go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. For all people should be believers in Jesus Christ. And as Peter was talking, the Holy Spirit fell on the people and they spoke in tongues. Peter was amazed and said, We can take you all to be baptized. Now, I wonder how these people's hearts had changed. Peter had to come across a very big divide. His heart was completely changed. To come from Joppa to Caesarea, he had to cross. He had to let Jesus open his heart. Jesus, on the cross, had made all things clean. The old laws of yes and no were only there to keep the people clean and holy. But Jesus had made a way for them to be holy. Peter had to allow God to change his heart so that he could go and take the good news of Jesus to other countries. And Cornelius, who didn't know about Jesus, had to open his heart and let the Holy Spirit come near. Now, I wonder if, like Peter, God is calling you to open your heart to change. Or I wonder if, like Cornelius, you need to open your heart to Jesus, his love, and the Holy Spirit. I wonder if you'll pray with me. Lord Jesus, please do your work of changing our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that you could have used an angel to speak to Cornelius, but you used a man. Please, Lord, use us. Please break our hearts and change us so that we can go. Amen. Thanks so much for that story, Ange. Wasn't that an incredible message that Jesus came to be bigger than the yes and no rules and truly change people's hearts to bring us close to God again? Why don't you talk about that more with your family this week and pray about it? And I just have one more challenge for you. I would love it if you could send in a photo of you, your siblings, maybe your whole family. And we would love to put those together into a montage to show all the beautiful Jubilee Kids faces and to remind us that we are in Jesus' Yes group. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Yeah.